Today, I'm gonna show you how to change out the burner assembly and a gas water heater, and I'm gonna do it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. In the last video you saw, we changed out the gas control valve. Now, we pulled out the burner assembly in order to do it to get it out of the way. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how to change out the burner assembly. First of all, I wanna say thanks to the people at Bradford White for giving me this great cutaway water heater because it lets me show you things inside, outside, and you can see more about a water heater than most people ever do. I'd been plumbing 30 years before I ever saw the inside of a water heater like this. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the gas off. Your gas water heater has a gas valve, a supply line, a control valve, and a burner assembly. That's the major part of what makes this thing work. So remember to turn your gas off, turn your valve 90 degrees. You wanna make it go perpendicular to the pipe. When it's parallel, it's on, perpendicular's off. So make sure you turn it off, and then you're ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the cover plate. And all this is for really is to protect everything down in here from dust and debris. So now that we've got the gas turned off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the control valve all the way over to off. The reason being is when I get ready to light it, it will have already reset. That way it'll be ready to light once I change the burner assembly. So then I'm gonna start disconnecting the electronics. So first I unplug my piezo switch. Then I'm gonna grab my channel lock tools. And no, they're not a sponsor. And I'm gonna start unplugging the electronics. Red is left, white is right, and the good thing is on this Honeywell valve, it's marked so I know that I don't get them in the wrong position. Next, I'm gonna disconnect my gas lines. So I've got my gas main line that goes into the burner. That's where your big gas feed is. The other one is for your thermal cup. Loosen them up, disconnect them, because they're attached to what we're gonna pull out. So now they're done. Now, it's up inside here where it makes its connection and it's bolted in the bottom. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the screws that actually loosen the burner assembly from the tank itself. So I like to loosen the screws up and then reach in and undo them by hand. That way I don't lose them. So now that all this is loose, literally, you can pull down and get it out of the gas control valve and then slide it to you. And the reason that you want to slide it straight to you, it's got a lip right down here that catches in that slot right on the inside. And when you're going to put it back in, you're going to go right back to the same spot. Now, when you pull the gas burner out, the one thing that you're going to want to do is get a wet vac. You're going to reach up inside and you're going to try to clean this out as much as you can. On these FVIR water heaters, they literally draw air down through the bottom and up through there. And that keeps the spark, the flame, that keeps anything from coming up in there. So you wanna make sure that's really clean because that's where your water heater gets the fresh air in order for the burner assembly to work properly. Okay, so now we're getting ready to put the burner assembly back in. We've already cleaned everything really good. The thing to remember is that this notch right here or this tab right here goes right into a notch on the inside. Now if you can see that notch, we're gonna slide right into it with our burner assembly. Then we're gonna put our gas right back where it goes. Now once I get it here, I just kind of hand tighten the nut, but it's not real tight as you can see I can move it around because now I want to get my screws in.
when you get all your gas connections tight, and remember, we'll come back and test those, you can plug all your electronics back in. It's marked red left, white right. There's really not a lot to it. This is something you can do at home to save you money. Remember, turn your gas valve 90 degrees to turn it on. Once it's on, you have gas back into your control valve. So now you want to take your control valve, turn it over to the pilot position, and press it in. Now once it's pressed in, you can press your piezo switch. That's going to create the spark that you're going to see through the sight glass. Once you get a flame, keep holding it in. Now, we don't have gas turned on here, so this isn't going to light. My thermocoupling is not going to heat up, and I'm, my light's not going to flash. But once it starts flashing, then you can turn it up, and I normally like to go just above medium. Guys, this is something that you can do very easy, and then put it all right back together. Things to remember. Make sure you turn off the gas valve before you start. Not that you're gonna get gas, because if you turn it off here, you really shouldn't. But be careful putting everything back in. If the felt around the burner assembly of the, the door, if that needs to be replaced, make sure you replace it. Chances are, if you've got a new burner assembly, it's gonna come with new felt, make sure you put it on there and that seals it off properly. Never take out that sight glass. I've heard people taking it out to let more air up inside there to help it burn hotter. Guys, that takes the safety feature completely away. That is not a smart thing to do. Last thing is, after you tighten up all your gas connections, make sure you take a spray bottle of soapy water, spray it all down once you turn the gas on to make sure there are no leaks. Putting it in and doing this yourself is easy to do, and it's really good to learn how to do it. The thing is, if you leave a gas leak here, you can cause a problem in your house that you really don't wanna have. In this video, I showed you how to change out a gas burner assembly. If you've got a gas water heater now, I've showed you how to change out the gas control valve and the burner assembly. This is something that you can do at home. Watch this video, follow the steps, and make sure you do everything, especially checking for a gas leak. Again, I wanna say thank you to Bradford White. This cutaway water heater makes it great so I can show you views from inside and you might get a viewer perspective that you wouldn't normally get. I also wanna say thanks to China Lock and Milwaukee. They're not sponsors, but I sure do like their tools. Guys, please leave us a thumbs up. Let us know if you like this and if you hadn't done it yet, subscribe. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.